In the last video, we talked about the limit, well, the epsilon limit definition for sequences. And if you haven't watched that video, I would highly recommend you watching that because I explain the definition with 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 visualization and and I try to explain it as thoroughly as possible. In this video, I will just prove a normal sequence with with the definition that I gave last time. And and just for reference, let me rewrite it here. So the definition, the epsilon, the epsilon definition definition for limits is this so for all epsilons greater than zero for all for for, for all uh, epsilons greater than zero there exists an n such that if i was to take the difference between the limit and the sequence th their their difference would be less than epsilon for all little n's which exceed the big n so in this video, I will, you know, you know, well, hopefully by now you probably understand how this works. On your exam, they will give you a sequence and they will also tell you what the sequence converges to and your duty is to, is to prove that it does. So let me give you an example. So uh, the, 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 the sequence, the sequence A sub N which is equal to 1 over n converges or approaches uh, so converges to 0 converges to 0 and you have to prove this prove this prove this with the limit with the limit definition So for your proof, you want to write this, however you want to get to this. Your whole goal is to find an n. They will always, you you let them choose uh, their epsilons. You, you tell them, for all epsilons, you, you know, that are greater than zero, I will find you an n. So this is how you do the proof. This is the proof. So you first you write uh, that, that, that for all, so for all epsilons, greater than zero, there exists an n such that, such that, so, so, write this. So this will be probably your scratch work. I should probably write this. Before you actually write your, your, your proof, you want to write down, you know, your steps. And in the, and in your proper proof, you want to show that you know this this equation works. So your scratch in your scratch work, what you do is you input the values given in in the formula that well in the definition. So we know that l minus a sub n is the same as me writing the limit. So this is clear clearly the limit, and this is my sequence. So I write zero minus one sub n. Okay, and I know this has to be less than epsilon, less than epsilon. So how, how do I do this? Well, 0 minus 1 sub 1 divided by n is negative 1 divided by n. And this is equal to what? 1 over n. Okay, so this has to be less than epsilon. Now, if, if I was to multiply n with both to both sides i would get so n would cancel here so it would be one is less than epsilon times n and if i was to divide epsilon from both sides i would have one over epsilon is less than n however in our definition we know that n has to be greater than n so if if so this basically says that n is greater than one over epsilon so if n is greater than this value, then this value has to be your big N. It only makes sense. So this is your scratch work. You can even write down scratch to show so that whoever is marking your, your proof, or if you're just learning this class just for fun, then you can you are allowed to write scratch in your proper proof. So whoever is marking it will ignore this. So once your job is to start from the definition and find the value of your big N, that's your duty so you let them choose their epsilon and you tell them what what big n this will work for so your proper proofs so this is a this is how you will write your proper proof proper proper proof so you tell them 
you say for all. So you say, so you say, uh, choose, choose any epsilon greater than zero. Then take, take n to be one divided by epsilon. Then for all n little n's greater than n and then you put a semicolon and you you know start writing your equation you will have this 0 minus a sub n will be equal to 0 minus 1 over n this will be equal to negative 1 over n this will equal 1 over n so I'm continuing this over here. So that will equal, so I'm just going to rewrite this, 1 over n. We know that 1 over n has to be this whole thing. Remember how this whole thing has to be less than epsilon? And we can't just write, you know, less than epsilon and we're done. That means nothing. We have to use the information that we have. So, so we say we rearrange this portion somewhere in our head or on a different piece of paper. You you rearrange this to be, uh, well, you switch epsilon with n, right? Because if you multiply both sides by epsilon and then divide it by big N, you would have that epsilon equals 1 over n. You want to incorporate your big N somehow in this proof. So you will say that this is less than this is less than 1 over n and if you don't know how i got there it's simple n equals 1 over uh, epsilon and we got that from the work that we did in the previous slide then i multiply both sides by epsilon that cancels and then i divide both sides by big n and epsilon will be equal to 1 over n and we know that 1 over n will be what we just calculated this 1 over big n is equal to epsilon so in your proof make sure you have your big n that's the whole goal you you have to tell them that you know this thing has to be less than some some n related value you have to have n your big n uh, somewhere in there so you need to have n your big n but it, at the end of the day what you want to have is this so i'll use pink to just highlight what we want to have we want to have our difference between the limit and the sequence which is being which is less than which is less than epsilon that's what we want at the end of the day that's that's all we need we want to have our our sequence we want to have our sequence which which sorry our limit subtracted with, with, with where we are subtracting our sequence which is less than epsilon that's the definition of of our uh, of our epsilon limit so once you once you do this and and let me get rid of let me get rid of this too uh, once you once you have or i think it would be faster for me to just cross it out and you can ignore this so one, and you don't have to you don't need this stuff at the top either this is all for explanation so you start from so my stars indicate where your proof starts your proof starts there choose any epsilon greater than zero then take n so big n to be one over epsilon then for any little n which is greater than big n and then you go through all the work and then you make it less than epsilon that's what you need to do and once you get to this equals epsilon you can put a q ed and you are done with your proof i hope that this video was helpful to you